Hi, welcome back to uh, the Wokingham Library's author talks. Um, I'm here with Izzy Lawrence, um, who's agreed to come and yeah, you, that's you. <laughs> um, who's agreed to come and talk to me about her brand new book, uh, The Unstoppable Letty Peg. As you can see, she's uh, waving it in front of the camera right now. Exactly. Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There you go. It looks really fun. Um, so what we're going to start with is, um, if you can just <laughs> tell... <laughs> Everything's going very smoothly. I didn't just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> on that on that note <laughs> mm -hmm. hi Izzy can you tell us Hello. about yourself and well, ab about the book and about your your sort of background just say everything just say everything just go well, for it right for those of you who've heard of me which is very few of you um I am a history presenter so I present making history on BBC Radio 4 I've got another of a number of other podcasts including the British Museum member cast the Z list dead list I'm about to launch a new podcast about dinosaurs very exciting called terrible lizards oh that's what I've been working on during lockdown but this has got nothing to do with lizards it's to do with suffragettes which is my book my book's called the unstoppable letty peg it's the first book what I have ever written which is quite it's quite big as well it's like proper story proper yeah. um and it is all about this girl called letty peg um who learns jujitsu with the suffragettes uh i know they did jujitsu who'd have thought and it was from learning about um the suffragettes doing jujitsu which actually was a little piece i made for radio 4 which got made pick of the week that that's how i got the book is because you know one of the editors at bloomsbury were just like um, you know, it was being retweeted going, oh, Izzy Lawrence made this wonderful bit of radio about people getting thrown over people's heads because the suffragettes used to have to defend themselves against the police from arrest. And so they did jujitsu in order to get out of scrapes and just chuck men over their heads. And so I did a piece on this for Radio 4 and that got tweeted a lot around the internet, sort of going, oh, this is amazing. And um, yeah, an editor on Bloomsbury found me on Twitter and went, oh, this would make a great kid's book. And I went, yes, yes, it will. Let's have a meeting. <laughs> and that's that's the origins of this little story. Um, but ultimately, it's got loads of um, actual events. So the thing is, because I've never written a book before, I'm really glad I chose historical fiction because you basically... You, it, it's not like a blank page there are definite yeah. dates and there are definite real people so you don't have it, to make it, it all up yeah you've got that timeline already haven't you really exactly so, so so that's that's the sort of so that is me i'm, I'm background is i'm stand-up comedian who just talks a lot about history and that got, <laughs> turned me into a history presenter and which then, has now and turned then, you into an author exactly you know it's all entirely accidental and chaotic but you know <laughs> keeps the cats alive keeps me and cat biscuits <laughs> I'll put that down now. I'll put it down. It's very nice though. Look, look. Mm. It, it looks very anyway, pretty. <laughs> it's in the very background good. there, as you see. That's yeah. there. With the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what, I mean, you've explained about how you came to writing, uh, being asked to write Letty. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and the, the origin of coming up with the jujitsu in inspired suffragette movement but can you tell us a bit more about the story and how all that came about well i mean the problem is that when you're asked to write because this is for kids by the way i mean grown-ups can read it too um in fact, i think grown-ups should read like it, it. Yes, yeah, fun one. It's a fun. It's it's got quite a lot of drama in there, uh, quite a lot of violence too. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the problem is I needed to make because like the thing is when I did suffragettes at school, what we learned was that these very serious and very intense women who are very serious and sad and they wanted the vote and the men wouldn't give them the vote so they starved themselves and one of them got hit by a horse and they were very meek and very sad and eventually they were so meek and so sad that the men gifted them the vote and that is not what happened at all no. in any sense of the way no, no. they were proper nuts the suffragettes and the thing is <laughs> that you know what they were fighting for is the right to vote but even more complicated than that, they were, weren't really fighting for every woman to have the vote. They were fighting for middle class married women over the age of 30 to have the vote. I mean, it's not, it's all very, mm, the history's muddled and dirty and weird. And the trouble <laughs> is, kids don't get the vote, so why do they care? You know, when yeah. I was a kid, I didn't really care. And so I needed to make my lead character, Letty, care. So I thought, well, why would she care? Well, maybe if her mum was a suffragette and her dad was a policeman, 
so they were you know there's battle yeah. in the home as well as battle on the streets that would actually make it more personal you've got the two her. sides of everything exactly that so it is that sort of you know that's where the sort of you no know, nub of the story the character thing is a lot yeah. what about this girl and also because my friend Naomi Paxton who is the historian who told me all about the suffragettes doing jiu-jitsu um she for my Z-List, Deadlist podcast she um like you know introduced me not only to the idea of suffragettes doing jiu-jitsu but I started to do jiu-jitsu as well and it mm. is because when I was a kid like I didn't I wasn't on the sports teams I, I liked to sit and I liked to eat chocolate and that yeah. was good yeah. Uh, and then I thought I, I used to see people running in the streets and doing stuff and I used to think oh they're just idiots who can't read or something and that's why they're <laughs> doing that it's just like what but then I thought you know I should take better care of myself really and I wanted to try a sport and this was just about the time when my friend Naomi told me about jiu-jitsu and suffragettes I thought well that's very feminist so I'll try that and yeah it's it, <laughs> it completely shifted the way my brain works so I used to think you know brain and body separate things but no very much together if I do like you know an intense jitsu session guess what I you know can get a lot more reading done I can get yeah. a lot more work done you're I'm a lot more like, energized to do stuff yeah but it's not even energized it's focused and it's also that yeah. sort of level of understanding it's, it's just a different it, it kind of kicks in that part of your brain that you didn't realize you needed and I no. thought oh how do I talk about that so I wanted Letty to sort of like feel that as well. And so literally I have her at the very start of the book, sort of very quiet, really wanting to fit in with the cool kids at school, but not even sure why she wants to. She just knows that's good. And yeah. yet she's quite middle class because her mum's quite posh and her dad's working class. So she doesn't fit in there. It's like, yeah. it's almost like, you know, she's a square peg in a round hole. Mm. Anyway, not saying where I got her last name from, but mm, very nearly called her bracket. Anyway, um, doesn't fit into one. Uh, but yeah, but it is, it is that sort of like thing. It doesn't quite fit. And jujitsu i wanted to show that how would this changes her and how it changes gives her not only physical confidence but also mental confidence yeah. and going oh i don't have to do what other people think i should do or what other people think i would like i yeah. can actually go with what i actually like and having the confidence to recognize that so yeah it is that you know and previously she only thought that about putting marmalade in porridge and that was about it as extent of her personality would go so yeah it's um it's, it's it's a sort of changing you know the way her she changes through yeah. getting good at something for the first yeah. time in her life that's that's really it and making friends that she wants to like mabel but there we go mabel is the best by the way she's the best <laughs> but she doesn't do jujitsu okay well yeah but she's the best but doesn't do jujitsu so yeah yeah, you know. yeah. but she's so, the best but <laughs> and until i read up about your book um I had no idea that suffragettes were doing jujitsu at all. So, yeah. um, you know, that is a completely fascinating thing to me and a completely fascinating concept, which is why I'm going to be reading the book as soon as I can get my hands on a copy. Um, and I think everybody should. Go to because... my website, izzy.com. I'll be fine. I'll get you one. Yeah. Be fine. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it strikes me that Letty could become a bit of a series is that have you got any plans for that or do you think she's just going to be a standalone well um, the thing is right like i've got i know what she does like in my head because obviously i know what happens so yeah. i know what happens i know where she ends i know what she's doing in 1915 guys i know everything yeah. however is that sort of weird thing of just going it's really nice the way it ends on the thing and the fact mm. that so many questions aren't solved it's quite you know, it allows people to read. So I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, I'm in, I'm, I'm in um, discussions with the publisher oh, about whether okay. we want to do another one or maybe do something different. So it's this sort of weird, you know, thing. It's but the limbo. There is, yeah, because there is so much more that happens. I mean, we're talking, when this is set, this is the end of 1910, beginning of 1911, it's when the book's yeah. set. And that's just when things start to get violent. So it's yeah. just when things are, it's basically said, hey, you can have the vote. No, we took it away because we're going to have an election. Hey, we're giving you the vote. No, fool. But like, literally, they're like Lucy with the football, the government. The yeah. suffragettes are like, you. And there's, that's when they properly start smashing windows. That is when you properly get people, the first people to die. Um, I think it was Miss Emmeline Pank, her sister, um, Mrs. Clark. I can't remember her first name now, but she dies over Christmas, which is also uh, mentioned in the book because she, you know, suffers. She was yeah, in the Battle of such um, a big deal. 
exactly. Anyway, she 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 sort of you know dies in it and everything else. But it's after it's nineteen thirteen when they get proper like wow. That's Going when they start. It. Oh yeah, that's when you get post boxes being set on fire and actually quite a few suffragettes set on fire because they don't really understand that you need to post it right away and you can't go shopping first. You know, if you've got a little salt, phosphor, honestly, literally, I've read the arrest reports and there's these policemen going, so I found, I heard reports of a burning woman. So I went to Dr. Jones's and, doctor, and I said, doctor, have you any burning women? There's a woman there on fire going, yes, I am right. Um, so, you know, uh, they would cut telephone wires. Women were banned from museums and galleries, like the British Museum. In order to get into the British Museum, you had to have a written note from a gentleman, of, you know, respectable gentleman, or have a man with you in order to be able to go read the books and look at the stuff. So, e, it was uh, we, we were seen as proper dangerous, and yeah. lots of people were scared. And these were largely middle class women. There were quite a few working class women who joined in. But if you're a working class woman, you can't really take the time off work because, funnily no. enough you need the money. So it, it was much more of a middle class movement in that sense, though great women like Annie Kenny and the rest of them were in there who were more working class, but it was, yeah, they were intense. I mean, Emily Davidson, who, you know, they do, I mean, Davidson, Davidson. Davis. Davidson, that's Davidson. it. See, yeah. it's the thing, it's all of the Davids. This is the trouble with men's names. Um, anyway, she famously is a woman who got, you know, um, run over by the king's horse and she deliberately threw herself in front of it and that's not the first time she tried to sort of martyr herself in that sense yeah. um she did you know get arrested a lot and she was utterly crazy brilliant but crazy like during the census she you know locked herself in the cupboard uh, a cleaning cupboard in parliament and that sort of thing so you know uh <laughs> sure well you see that sounds crazy and you think oh that's quite a nice little fact and then you realize what all the other you know wspu suffragettes were doing which was they had a little protest in Trafalgar Square this is also in the book and then afterwards they went roller skating only stopping at 5 a.m but this is all so they couldn't say where they were the night of the census because they weren't anywhere so they can't anyway so you can't find us because right. we're not lying we're just not anywhere no, they were roller skating and then at 5 a.m they all went to the Gardenia which is a vegetarian restaurant and had sandwiches so you know there's 500 women doing that and a few blokes yeah. but <laughs> It, it's one of those things that you don't hear about, is it? it, it it's it's yeah. it's something that you don't get taught in schools because schools are looking at the sort of the big events, the key events, whatever. Exactly. So, you don't you don't hear story of Bertrand Russell's first wife giving a really sort of feminist speech on top of a diving board and then fully clothed after she finished giving her speech on the top run of the diving board, just diving straight in the water. You, you don't hear stories like that. No. You know? And all the crowd chucking in their money while other women dive into the bottom of the pool to fetch it up and that sort of thing is a fundraising, you know, but they raised so much money like the WSPU. Um, big suffragette movement headed by the Pankhursts, they've raised more money than the Labour Party at this time. They were huge. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, sorry, that's not in the book. I don't talk about. No. No. The kids it... aren't going to get bored by this. It's mainly about horse poo and violence. <laughs> so. Which is is good. why we should also get boys reading it. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I think there are. It is. You know, Pike. See, when I was a kid, I enjoyed books which were mainly about boys. Yeah. You know, this has got boys in it. Look, there's a boy on the cover. Look, he's that. He's a man with a moustache. He's a police officer. <laughs> but there are boys in it. It's not like they're, you know, and they're no. not the bad guys. I, the police aren't the, necessarily the bad guys. The big bad guy in my book is Winston Churchill because he was Home Secretary. So if you want <laughs> to confuse your children by going, I thought he helped us win the Second World War. Yes, he did. He was great at that. He was a terrible Home Secretary. <laughs> There we go. So, so it's, you know. a, it's a really good overview of that time period, is what you're saying. Yeah, I really think so. well detailed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm really enthused to read it, and I hope everybody else is going to be really enthused to, to, to read it as well. Um, but one of the things I just want to touch on is the book came out in February. Um, and obviously, quite such great soon, timing. Such amazing yeah. timing. So it's all of my events in schools, I, I managed to get a couple of schools done. So I got into schools and I shouted at the short people and I nearly inspired them for revolution against the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. Uh, okay. But yeah, no, it was it was it was just really bad. I managed to do a World Book Day event, and then that was kind of it. And then they sort of shut all the schools and they stopped the visitors and everything else. So I'm reliant on lovely people like you to sort of like talk about <laughs> it and spread the word because you know it's available on on all good yeah. you know bookshops 
so that's the thing if you want a signed copy go to my website and i'll send you one in the post but uh yeah it is that sort of you know <laughs> terrible time to be selling yeah. anything really so um but but apart from the fact that you haven't been able to go out and promote the book have you found that there's been do you know anything about how many sort of copies you've sold or what the uptake's been of it or like, like absolutely no idea so. absolutely <laughs> well the trouble is you see that in theory the sales are great because the way the book industry works is ah oh, we'll yeah. sell to all the bookshops and then they'll and so, so at the they'll moment all of them are sold yeah. and then they sell it on and any ones they don't sell on will get returned so we're expecting quite a few might get returned because the bookshops haven't been open to sell any books no but but i think the online sales haven't been too bad i mean i'm certainly sending out at least one package a day to the post to so you know, with books people selling yeah. you know through my website and stuff so from my perspective it's going brilliantly yeah. but i am one you know i'm not the main no. retailer i'm just the i'm just the person but you know you don't know really and hopefully you know these things they you know it's all about word of mouth yeah. so if you've read the book and you've enjoyed it you know tell people it doesn't even have to be this book if you're reading a book right now and you're really enjoying it let people know yeah. and that way they can read it too and maybe pick up copies and they know yeah. you know what to read really but really you should be reading this one it's really nice <laughs> yeah i think we all need to go out and get a copy of letty peg now yes the unstoppable letty peg the unstoppable yeah. letty peg they wouldn't let me call her lettuce on the cover i was quite annoyed um, it's actually a quote from the book the unstoppable letty peg which is why it's called that but um yeah she's she is throughout the book there's only one <laughs> character who calls her letty and the rest of everybody else including herself calls her lettuce because it's the most awardian name i could think of <laughs> <laughs> there's not many lettuces around i want to bring it back if you have a small child right and you can rename them because they're small enough and minimal paperwork <laughs> or if you've got like a pet no, not not a rabbit. That's a bit weird. But uh, any other pets, call them a lettuce. Cat called lettuce. <laughs> exactly. Why not? <laughs> unstoppable. The unstoppable lettuce. Yeah. Sounds a bit like a horror so horror. Um, <laughs> yes, it's like a vegan monster. <laughs> um, so that's brilliant. You've you've. Infused, I've said everything. You've infused <laughs> me to go out and read Letty Pay. Have I enthused you to try Jiu Jitsu though? Because I really think you should. It's I really think good I, fun. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to look yeah, into it's, it. It is. It is. It's one of these things where, like, yeah. Oh, okay. What I'm allowed to do. Uh, it, what's really amazing is when actually in your your fighting with jiu-jitsu you're actually looking for somebody who is bigger than you because they're actually easier to deal with than somebody who's smaller <laughs> than you it's one of these really weird things like i'm thinking well i'd much rather sensei finn who is you know nearly 100 kilo and taller than me and massive attacks yeah. me than like my friend sam <coughs> sensei sam who is you know she could walk with the top hat under a table and trying to get to just, like flip her over is really hard because she's really near the ground whereas Finn you just go as long as he hits me hard enough I can just take that and go Shoom, straight to the floor <laughs> uh, but yeah but it, it is one of these things where you do learn self-defense in a very you know it's how to cause the maximum amount of pain compliance which is what <laughs> the suffragettes did it yeah. was quite yeah don't worry I do not teach children how to, to <laughs> Bloomsbury wouldn't let me they took out all the details about you know eye gouging and everything it's terribly oh, okay. sad right so. But, uh, but <laughs> so your kids are not going to become violent no. upon reading this but they might be able to you know defend themselves against horrible people yeah. like uh, PC Treadwell mm. Mm. okay so we're all going to go out and buy Letty Peg, the unstoppable yes. Letty Peg. We're all, all going to and buy it. Order it. Click and order. <laughs> Click and order. <laughs> Click yes. and order. There it is. And, it, and you said if you want an autographed copy to go to your website, which is... Yes. I-S-Z-I. So I-S-Z-I.com. I spell Izzy yeah. weirdly, but I-S-Z-I.com. Yeah. If you go so, there, you'll find it. Yeah. And you can listen to all the podcasts and everything else. If you're if you're a short person watching this, so if you're like, you know, below, below the age of, you know, I'd say 14, maybe some of my podcasts are not for you because they contain naughty words and they're for grown-ups. Grown-ups. But um the podcast Mummy and Daddy can listen to them. Yeah. Yeah, Mummy and Daddy yeah. love them. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to me Izzy it's been absolutely wonderful getting to know about you and the unstoppable letter peg and yeah 
suffragettes yeah. in general they were much more awesome than you think they were they were really <laughs> cool it's just that you know and the events in the book all the events there's some real characters edith garrett who taught the um the suffragettes jiu-jitsu her husband william garrett who i've got books from 1910s in here winston churchill um annie kenny one of the main suffragettes um una dugdale who one of the, another main suffragette princess sophia singh who um was related to um uh, you know she, her dad basically gave up half of the punjab he used to be the ruler of the punjab yeah. and gave it up to queen victoria <laughs> but she her queen victoria was her um, godmother so she's in the book dressed up and being very silly uh but and so the risk the research of this book is quite intense even the weather can i just point that out the weather is correct because in the past in old newspapers when you had the weather written on the back it wasn't what that the weather was going to happen it was literally a weather report of all the rain that had happened that week because <laughs> that's what you needed to know but that yeah. means that actually for days i know what happened i looked You're up and just on. said what's yeah, exactly. So I looked, I was, what was the weather doing in London that day? Oh, it was raining. Oh, it's raining again. Gosh, it's a wet month. Gee, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but you know, so to the level of historical accuracy, that's what you're getting in this book. It's quite fun. Yeah. So it sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes, my, my, my microphone's just changed, if you can tell. Yeah, can just me? a little bit. So yeah. we'll wrap it up now. And um, everybody's got to go to your website. Everyone's got to read The Unstoppable Letty Peg. And once again, Izzy, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to me today. <laughs> Bye. Bye.